Hi, I'm Mark Keen from Keen Engineering. I'm here to show you our new 160 dry washer. We've had this machine out for about five years now. We've had some reasonably good success with it, but we've just recently done a whole gamut of improvements on the machine. Uh, but I'm going to kind of give you a quick overall how it works. Um, the dry wash is fairly simple. You have a hose that attaches to the bottom of it, and the hose blows a constant air of a constant flow of air coming through a vibrator, which spins, and that's what creates an agitation in the box. And then as the material, as the air passes through the, the riffle board, it creates a static charge. Now it's interesting, we use a piece of polyester um, carpet, and what happens is the air pressure comes through the polyester carpet, and then it comes in contact with a polycarbonate piece of plastic, which is a high static charge material. Then we go through a piece of, uh, it's almost like a toolbox liner, but it's basically Buna rubber which also creates static. The same thing like if you were to take a balloon, rub it on your head, and stick it on the wall. And then we go through a piece of silk screen, which is really not silk screen anymore. It's actually a polyester carpet. But the combination of all three of these things vibrating together at a very microscopic level creates a nice static charge. And it also gives you a nice distribution of air. So the way it works is the riffle board sits like this. And the air comes up through the cloth, through the four different layers and it creates a light cushion of air. So as the material flows down on, onto the riffle, the heavy material doesn't have enough force to be picked up and jumped over the riffle. So again, it's a combination of air suspension, vibration, and static that creates the recovery. If you look inside here, you've actually got a little vibrator in here. It's got a little fan. And as the air passes through that, that, that fan spins. Now I'm going to put it back together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my carpet, my polyester carpet, slide it in. I'm going to take my riffle board, slide it in until it stops. Then I'm going to take my lever here and I'm just going to roll it over and lock it in position. Now this is all locked into position nicely. Now you'll notice we also have a door system here. And this just basically locks it down. And the reason this whole machine is so much different from our all, all over the dry washers, it's really designed to be a low dust piece of equipment. T dry washers traditionally, whether it's ours or anybody else's, they're very dusty. Ours are probably the lowest dust because we have the highest static charge. But this even takes it to a, a, another level because we direct all the dust down and since it's charged heavily with, uh, with um, uh, positive ions, it just sticks to the ground. So. Anyways, and then you can tell the whole machine here is suspended on springs, and this allows the machine to move very freely. Now, we've done a lot of uh, recent improvements on the machine, and probably the two biggest things we've done, if you can look here, we've incorporated a set of bumpers. And what the bumpers do is they just subdue the vibration just a little bit. The machine, if you don't have the, vi the, the bumpers tightened down, it vibrates at such a high frequency that it can actually direct, you can actually walk gold out of the riffles. But when you install the bumpers, it subdues the vibration just a little bit, and it allows you to get that perfect little pulse action. I'll actually demonstrate that in a few minutes. Now, if you come up here, there's another big improvement we made on the machine. We've incorporated a blast gate. And what a blast gate is, it's just a way of dumping air out of the system. See, you have to have a fair amount of air flow and pressure to go through the vibrator to create that uh, ideal vibration. But the problem is, we had on the previous model, we had a smaller door, about that big. And honestly, it was just too small, because uh, you, what it did in order to get the vibration, you had to, to run the engine up high to get the vibration um, speed out of the vibrator. So you created too much air pressure in the riffle board, and everything was just floating a little bit too high above the riffle board. It was really fast, but the final recovery, there was room for improvement. Now, by increasing the size of this adjustable door, so you can open and close it, we're actually able to control the amount of air pressure underneath the riffle board. And that, the ability to control that air pressure is a huge, a huge improvement on maintaining your fine gold recovery. So, the bumpers is the newest improvement in this, and honestly, it's making a huge difference. All right, so I'm gonna show you here is what we call our HVS, our high back system. It's kind of a dual purpose piece of equipment. And what it does, it provides, right now, it's set up as the dry washing system. 
So we're taking the output of the blower and we're blowing air into the, uh, the dry washer. And what that does, it creates the air suspension for the material to pass and allows the vibrator to spin. So right now we're set up for the blower application. But just as important, see, whenever you're dry washing, you get into cracks and crevices and things like that. And the only way to really get that material is out properly is to actually suck it out. So what we'll do is you can actually take the machine and convert it over to use it as a, as a shop vac. To convert it as a shop vac, all you do is remove this hose here. And if you notice, we've got a plug right here. Okay, so for the shop vac, you plug off the one side, okay, you plug this in, and you suck up your material with that. So I mean, how cool is that? And like I said, even if you have a big dry washer, you get down to the bottom of a hole and you have cracks and crevices, and you don't want to sweep the stuff out, you want to suck it out. This makes your life way easier, so it's a super cool tool. Also, we're running a really good engine. We use the best motor we can find. We use the Makita blower, and the reason we chose that blower is because it's a four-stroke engine. You no longer have to mix your gas in oil. You have a standard uh, oil filler here, and it's also a relatively quiet motor compared to the other ones this engine started and we're going to start doing some prospecting. All right, right here you can see Patrick and I, we're just kind of going over the machine. We're watching the riffles work. We're seeing how the vibration is. We're putting our hands in the riffle board, you know, verifying that everything's in a, a state of air suspension adjusting the uh, blast gate so we can actually control the air pressure underneath the riffle board, um, dialing in the bumpers and so on. So this is just part of when you first get your machine running that you have to inspect to make sure everything's working well. And we can kind of tell that we have it dialed in once we see kind of like a ripple action, kind of like a, a throwing a rock into a pond and you see a ripple action of water. Okay, you can see here we have the machine basically dialed in and you will notice quite a bit of dust coming out of the discharge. So I'm going to go ahead and close the door down and you'll notice the dust will drop by about 80%. Now you don't get really the full effect when you have a breezy day like we do right now. However, what's interesting is because of the heavy static charge in the machine, all the dust gets charged with positive ions and when it hits the ground it sticks. The effect isn't quite as apparent when you have a breeze, but you still get a general idea on, on the lower dust capacity. Um, after we shot the video, we went ahead and ran the machine for a couple more hours, and we did find some good gold, so we had a lot of fun on this, this particular outing. But one thing did surprise me. After I kind of got used to the machine, I realized it could handle more capacity than I thought it could, and I was able to feed it at a, what I would consider a medium to slow pace. And that kind of surprised me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could completely bury the machine if I wanted to. But if I'm going to go out for the day and I'm going to go out and work for two, three, four hours, pace myself, the machine was a good size for a one-man operation. And I'm not going to go out there and kill myself anymore, but I had a lot of fun, and it was so much fun using this the high banker as well. All right, here we're feeding the machine, and the camera doesn't do it justice, but the entire machine and the, the top ho classifying hopper is vibrating vigorously. So as soon as we dump our sand and gravel and everything into the hopper, the rocks just immediately walk down the screen, and the sand and gravel falls through the screen into the lower box. Okay, you can see here Pat's shoveling directly into the machine, and if you watch carefully towards the bottom of the picture, the bottom of the hopper actually builds up with material and then it slowly feeds in. We've got a really cool feed system. Um, we've actually got a set of fingers that you can adjust open and close. In fact, you can see me adjusting it now. So obviously the more open you have, it, the more material flows into the lower recovery system, and vice versa. You can you have a nice amount of control, but I really like the finger system because it spreads everything out nice and evenly. Yes. 
Looking good. Yeah. If you look, look inside, Pat, you can see the fingers are pulling up that and spreading the material out. Kind of the little fingers kind of help even out the flow. Yeah. So you get a nice uh, even flow throughout the entire board instead of creating like a funneling into the board. So we're getting good action going through it. You can also see that nice ripple action. Okay, with that, you know you're getting good over coverage. We took some more material, but they're nice and loose. All right, here I'm doing a little bit further testing. I'm just trying to experiment. I'm backing off the rubber bumpers, and I noticed that the machine, the vibration speeds up really too fast. I was kind of surprised how fast it was. And then I went ahead and tightened the bumpers back down to see what happened, and then all of a sudden the vibration was subdued slightly, and we had a little bit more of a gentle loping action, which seems to work better for selling the gold rather than walking the gold up and over the edges. So a little bit experimenting constantly and you know we're still learning how to fine tune the machine. I'm sure all my customers will have lots of input but uh, it's really working good. I'm really happy with the performance of it. Okay. Okay. We should have all of our values here in this tray. Probably a lot of it's on that first riffle. Gonna kind of shake the tray down. Then you can actually actually take the tray. Look at all that black sand. I see a lot of black sand. There's got to be something good in there. Look yep. at that. Yeah, it's a lot. And sometimes if you tap it long enough, you'll actually get that gold to climb up right here, and then you can see it. Kind of like a shaker table or something. I'm going to dump this in there too. Wow, that looks uh, like a lot of concentrates, a lot of black sand. And then dump it in the bucket, then we'll go pan it out in a minute. Yeah, by the way, when you, every time you do a cleanup, you want to make sure you get this piece nice and clean. This has two purposes. It creates the static charge, but it's also an air filter. In case you suck, you suck a bunch of dust through the machine, you necessarily don't want to plug up your riffle board, but if you clean this, the body of the riffle board always stays clean. So always be sure to uh, clean that one before you put it back in. And one of the things I do is I just beat it against the yeah. side of the machine. Get the dust off. Get all the dust off of it so it doesn't clog up this filter pad. Then I'm going to slide this thing back in there. And then that little groove that's in the back, that little slot, set it in there so it's perfectly level. we got the tray all cleaned out in the bucket now. I'm going to put this thing back in here. Okay. You push all the way back? Yep. Okay. Lock, lock it down. Lock it down. That's, okay. That's too easy. Okay, now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take, I'm not going to process the material right now. We're going to now convert this into a, a wet washing machine. You know, this not only is a dry washer, we've just gone through a whole nother generation of improvements on the dry washer part, but we're also doing a whole new generation of improvements on the, the wet washing system. So I'm actually really excited to show you that. All right, a little while ago, we were running the dry washer up there, running some of the dry material where we didn't have any water at all. And as we came downstream here, we actually have water. So we're gonna demonstrate our high banker attachment for the 160. And Mark, take it away. Okay, I'm going to show you now what this new kit comes with. It's pretty cool. You've got a new, uh, completely all new hopper design system. And this is the same hopper we put on our Keen Super Concentrators or our Mini Max. We call it a flood header. And we call it a flood header because it gives you a nice, smooth, even flow of water down the box. So it's really an important thing. Um, the next thing that the, the, the wet kit comes with, you have a rubber mat here, and you got a, a secondary riffle board. You also have a, uh, a little rubber damper, almost like an Alaskan damper. This just helps calm the water down in the sluice. And helps break the surface and tension. And helps break the surface tension. And this is a, uh, a Grizzly Bar classifier that works with the flood hitter. I'll show you that later. But here's kind of the, the biggest change that I really like. We've done two things. We've got a, a section of the Miracle Mat, which has already proven to be the best matting in the world, hands down. 
it does a phenomenal job on flower gold. It's not the greatest on real big pieces of gold, but we actually use a combination of two ripples. We use the old school green rib carpet with like a medium sized expanded metal. And this works phenomenal on the larger pieces of gold. So you've got coarse gold and all flower gold. It's a perfect combination. But the coolest thing that we didn't realize it was wrong, but the standard ripple board runs at probably about an angle like that. When we hook this piece up here, we actually change the pitch of the riffle. So one riffle is running almost flat and one's a little steeper. So you really have the perfect combination to handle quite a bit of volume of material. So Pat's over here hooking up the, the top hopper, hooking in the flood header. All right, what I did is I took out these two screws here, little Phillips head nuts, and also this plate right here, and that allows the, the header to actually uh, stick through there so we can connect the hose. This is the header unit right here. It's also got the uh, hopper on there that helps uh, change the direction of flow so the water loses velocity. And that's going to fit in here. That fits into there just like so. We also got to put the clamp on there. That I'm just going to stick in my pocket for now. And then I'm going to replace the screws in the hopper on each side. And that kind of locks it all in position. So now we're actually just converting it now from a dry washer to a wet washer. So we're going to put the screws back in there. Okay, Mark's going to change the guts in the inside over to the wet ripple. And then we got the grizzly bars that allow the rocks to slide off. And it looks like this thing just kind of goes in, yep. down, gets underneath there. Yeah, that drops in pretty nicely. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, I forgot to mention in the kit, it also comes with a, a water pump. We use a pretty girthy pump. We put in a 2200 gallon per hour pump. So this really gives you more than adequate water flow. In fact, you, um, you really have to turn it down in some application. So it's nice to have a pump that's underkill versus, I mean, overkill versus underkill. And it's a, what, a 2100 gallon an hour pump? 2200. It's also an American made pump, too. That's you awesome. know how you and I are. I, we hate our Chinese crap. I mean, okay. someone else is trying to stop. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna set the pump up. Put it in a go pan so it doesn't uh, suck up any sand or grit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over the inner guts right now. So I'm, first thing I'm gonna do is we have a little rod that you just basically pull out and you can take your whole hopper. Don't lose that, Pat. I always lose them. Okay, then I'm gonna take my riffle board. I'm gonna remove this and this. Set that aside. Now I'm going to take in my rubber mat. And you do get a little leakage into the lower box, but it's a little water doesn't hurt anything. The water doesn't get high enough to actually uh, get into the bearings or anything so, for the vibrator. We've already tested that a couple times. That slides underneath here. Okay. It's pretty snug inside there. Then I'm going to take the riffle. Now it's interesting, when you look at a dry washer, the riffles go like this. They actually face uphill. Now that we're going into a wet system, we reverse the, ri the riffle and go downhill. It's kind of like the cantered up riffle is more of a, a Chinese riffle. And when you turn it the other way, it's a Hungarian riffle that relies on that eddy current behind it to uh, help concentrate the material. That fits in there pretty good. Yeah, this is really cool. Okay, latch that one down for me. Got it. Now you notice you don't really need too much in the tools. Screwdriver. And that's how that fits up there, pretty simple. So, okay. Why don't you stick the hose in there oh, and yeah. I'll tighten that up real okay. quick. Okay. It just slides in there. Good. Okay, go for it. Okay. Now we've successfully converted our dry washer to a high banker. Two machines, actually one machine that does both. Uh, once we get everything adjusted, we're about ready to hook up the battery juice, and we're probably going to have to adjust the level of the, of yeah, the high banker slash dry washer. We could just adjust the legs, Mark. Yeah, I just want to get why they're all adjustable. Here, grab that one, Pat. Got it. 
we went, I'm trying to get this, you know, that miracle now, you want to run it pretty flat for that killer recovery. So I think we're probably in the ballpark. Okay, here. why don't you get some water flow going yep. through it? Now, right. actually, I'm using a relatively small battery. It's called a U1 battery. It might give us about an hour's run time. If you want to run long, you might have to get a bigger battery, but this is a lot easier to transport in. Got it. Okay, now interesting, you can show the, the riffle board running right now. See, I got a small rubber flap here. Now you'll see a little bit of turbulence in the water right now, but as soon as I put this rubber flap, it flattens it out. I mean, how cool is that? You see the big difference? Yeah. And that really breaks the surface tension yep. of the water too. And it's so easy to take on and off. Turn that water down just yeah, a hair. Yeah, pretty fast. Okay. That might be all we need for our concentrates. Yeah. But, but when I start shoveling material, I'm going to crank that valve on. Let's run a little material through it, though. I wanted to see what it handles. And again, it's really easy to adjust because it's okay. Got you got four, the water more on one weight. side. There you go. Okay, let's try. Let's shovel over the material and do it, see how it works. Okay, if you're gonna shovel into it, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and crank, crank this up, up a bit. Okay. Now again, this is not a big large scale high banker, it's more of a sampling machine. It's used for processing concentrates. But if you want one machine that does a lot of different things, this thing's awesome. Okay, you know, a few minutes ago we noticed that we were losing all of our water because we were pumping our water down below the fall here. So we decided to reposition this and flatten out the sluice and create a little bit more angle for the Grizzly. Now we're going to start running it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Good. You'll notice that we don't have it plugged in until we're actually shoveling material into it to try to conserve our battery. Exactly. All right. Make sure the uh, water is e flowing evenly through it. Pretty close. I'm going to adjust it just a touch. Looks pretty good right now, Pat. Okay, perfect. All right. Get the See how it handles the material now. And that's washing the material off. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta raise that one piece. That's yeah, working like a champ. Can you come out some softer dirt for the demo? Yeah, I like the flow of that sluice. It's nice, slow, and steady, and even. And the little rubber dam just really makes a difference. That's working good too now, Pat. Good. See, so yeah, you just gotta get that everything flattened up and the whole thing works. You just you'll gotta notice, get that right pitch on the uh, Grizzlies. You'll notice that we, if you measure from here to here, we probably got almost about a two inch pitch going up. It looks a little funny, but it works great. And again, remember, we have one steep ripple in this portion here and a shallower ripple here. So we can handle higher flows of water, lower flows of water, and even a really coarse gold on a very fine gold with the Miracle Map. Handles the material and crosses the material pretty nicely.
Occasionally you have to grab the little screen here, you have to pull it up, wiggle it, it does get plugged up, but overall it handles material pretty nice. You know, I think if we went a little wider on that Grizzly bar, it might be good. Maybe a couple more times. You mean out here wider? Yeah. So it kind of sits all the way across it and slightly elevated. Okay, maybe we, we can try that and we'll also raise this too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. two, two things we're going to change. But the sluice part of it's running great. Oh yeah, you think about it, Pat. You got the ripple up inside that's real steep, runs clean, you got a nice flat one. You got the best of both worlds. You got your coarse gold, your medium gold, and your flower gold, all in that one box. Cool. And you can use it for concentrates, running, processing, uh, Tannings out of a big machine, out of a, out of a larger dry wash, or a, or a dredge, or a problem, anything. But I really like the way it's working. You can grab that screen into the wiggle, or it clears right out. Also, this bar is kind of handy. If you get tired, to rest your bucket. I'm going to show you guys something interesting. This kind of shows you how the miracle mat works. Now, when I'm looking at the ripple board right now, I see the ripples are loading just about right. And all the if here's your miracle mat, all the black sands up in here spinning in a circle like this. As soon as you shut the water flow down, especially slowly, everything shifts forward. So watch this. I'm going to slow it down real gently here. I can see all the black sands loading in there. As I shut it down further, I can actually see everything's kind of shifting forward in there. Now we're not going to see any gold in here because this thing is really efficient. All the gold is going to be up in this top half up here and maybe a little bit in here. Only the finest flour. But to do a cleanup, you just start off by removing your uh, little damper. And then we have to clean up this lower section first. So I just take my wing nut off here. We actually processed quite a bit of material. We were probably moving, you know, not enough to keep a guy, a guy real busy, but it's uh, for something small and compact. Someone wants to do some really hardcore testing and they want to get a, a true 100% recovery level. This thing is phenomenal. So I'm going to first just pull all this back, pull my miracle mat out. I'm just going to wash it out in my bucket. Wash it out real easy. Here's the uh, black carpet here. This is just our standard green rib carpet, but it works a lot better than most people realize it does, especially when you combine it with your expanded metal here. So I'm going to just take that, wash it out in the bucket. And I did just see a little color. Now if I want to clean this one out, I flip that up. Pull this out. Now we're still plugged in. So I'm just going to get a little water to wash it through here. A little more. Oh, I saw a little piece. Two little, three little pieces so far. Go ahead and unplug it there, Zach. Unplug it? Yeah. Okay, so that's a pretty easy cleanup. So let's pan it out and see what we got. Pan. I'm going to shake it up real good. Get that material agitated so that the lights come to the top and the heavy sink to the bottom. That's the cons from the dry washer too, isn't it? Yeah, it's all the cons. Cool. We should have probably done them separate yeah. since we're testing, but you know. Well, the high baker There's makes only it, so much time in the day. Yeah, but the high baker makes it nice to process the to, to flow through things a lot faster. The wet system. When you get down to the black sand, you really got to take your time. Look at that. And there's not always gold where you find lots of black sand. 
Black sand is a, uh, it's an iron ore. It has a specific gravity of 4.5, but the gold that we're after is like 19.6. So the gold settles down pretty good. So I'm just gonna pan it down. We almost got it down here, panning it kind of fast. But I spent a lot of time shaking it up. I think I just saw a little something. Yeah, too late now an SP12 pan. It's yeah, that's it. actually my favorite pan. Yeah. Like look at that, I see that one little piece that we found earlier. Okay, get a little water in the pan. Why don't you get a close-up of this? Very gently, just kind of wash that black sand down. Look at that. I see a lot of real fine gold in there too. That's a good sign. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I see all kinds of little specks in there. Yeah, I see it from here too. You know what? Not a lot, but... Oh, wow, look at that. Now it's starting to come out. <laughs> That's pretty good color, actually. It's a lot of fines. Well, I guess this is why we're going to keep it as our secret spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No secret. Now watch this. Look at that. Yeah, it's a lot of good. A lot you of got good three little tiny there. pieces and a lot of real fine stuff. That machine did a pretty good job on the real fine stuff. Look at all that. Yeah, that's cool. They're like little fly specks. So can we stop doing the videotapes and go to work now? <laughs> well, I guess it's now we're on our time. Let's go back yeah. where we were before. Sounds like fun. Where we found that piece right there. Yep. And we got one other little piece in there too. Not too bad. Nope. All right. Okay. This is a combination of all the uh, black sands and concentrates from both the dry washer and the wet washer. And we're still not telling anyone where we're at. Right now we're back at the shop. We just got stuff unloaded. It's getting a little hot out there. And uh, we had to finish up our taping. So we're going to see what we found. Well, you could tell me we went back and did some more dry washing, Patrick. Well, we did. Okay, you told them. One of my friends, uh, Jason, showed me where the spot was. And I kind of promised I wouldn't tell anyone else where it was. But I can say it's not too far from home. That's nice. Isn't it nice using the one of our regular pans, the SP4, SP12? Yeah, this, this is the pan that I normally use in the tub. Okay, now we use the riffles. Let's go to the smooth end here. Or the sanded finish. Oh yeah. At least you can see the gold if it goes over the edge with that a lot of color. A lot of super fine gold. This is not a technique for the novice. Always use the riffles. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, as soon as I guess we trust this, but you people shouldn't, man. They'll lose all that gold. <laughs> I'm just paddling that water out of there. Well, you know what? Let's see what we got here. Secret hiding spot. <laughs> it was a beautiful area too, I have to admit. Yep, there's our that there's that big piece. Yep. 
Yeah, look at that. How much think we got there, Pat? Um, I don't know. I'd say probably a gram, okay. maybe. That's cool. Well, we know where it to really back doesn't to. matter how much. Look at that. Not too shabby. That's awesome, dude. That's a combination of dry washing and uh, high banking. Very cool. In our secret spot. <laughs> <laughs> We're not uh, telling. Yeah. Not too shabby. Nope, not at all. Right on. Just load up the truck again. <laughs>